Before we left, all of us were very much excited. However, we weren't really sure about what to expect. For the grade tens, we'd spent the last eight months learning about World War I and World War II, but it was only through textbooks and notes. Now we were actually going to have a chance to visit the Me Ridge, Beaumont Hamel, and the Menin Gates. Just before we left for Europe, the grade ten girls were invited to a ceremony at Parliament Hill, where Ottawa student representatives were handed the flag from the Peace Tower and had a chance to meet with Prime Minister Stephen Harper. For me, it made me realize that the upcoming trip would be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and luckily, hundreds of other Canadian students could share the experience with me. The inspiration for today's event is the Hands Across Generation Memorial Flag 12. Each student who is participating in the, in the tour has been assigned a Canadian soldier that served during World War I, as well as one that served in World War II. And after researching each soldier and their life, they've been that much more prepared to understand the commitment that these soldiers gave to Canada and the freedom worldwide. Each of the students have taken, and we'll have some samples for you afterwards to see this, each of the students have taken a piece of quilt, placed three hands in the shape of maple leaf on the flag that inserted their name, the name of the first soldier and the second soldier, and these will be sewn, sewn together around the local school or community flag to create the memorial flag. And two of these memorial flags will also be sewn around uh, together, excuse me, and carried with the Peace Star flag and presented to the people of Holland on May, uh, in, on the tour of May, when we arrived in May. It's an inspiring project, and I'm so looking forward to seeing kind of fruition when we arrive in Holland. <laughs> okay, so um, what are you the most excited about for this trip? Uh, I'm most excited about the secret annex. I think it will be really touching and interesting to see where Anne Frank stayed during the Holocaust and everything. Okay, um, and what do you think about the ceremonies we're going to in Holland? I think they're going to be great and I'm really excited and looking forward to it. International Exhibition of Paris of 1889, commemorating the centenary of the French Revolution. The Prince of Wales, later on King Edward VII of England, opened the tower. At 300 meters and 7,000 tons, with 300 steel workers and two years to construct it, it was the world's tallest building until 1930. The tower was almost torn down in 1909, but was saved because of its antenna used for both military and other purposes and the city let it stand after the permit expired. When the tower played an important role in capturing the famous spy, Mada Harai, during World War I, it gained such importance to the French people that there was no more thought of demolishing it.
During its lifetime, the Eiffel Tower has also witnessed a few strange scenes, including being scaled by a mountaineer in 1954 and parachuted off of in 1984 by two Englishmen. In 1923, a journalist rode a bicycle down from the first level. Some accounts say he rode down the stairs. Other accounts suggest the exterior of one of the tower's four legs, which slope outward. In June 1944, a total of 20 Canadian soldiers were executed by German officers in the Garden of Abbey Dardenne because they refused to share Allied information. When visiting the Benny Soutmer Cemetery for Canadian soldiers in France, I was struck to find the headstone of a particular soldier. The epitaph of Raymond Arthur Wall read, Raymond Arthur, son of Patrick and Elizabeth Wall, Armprior, Ontario, Canada. I have grown up in Armprior as have my mother and father as well as my grandfather. It was a very emotional experience knowing that I had some sort of connection, even if it was only vague, to the man who died at 25. I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad, the dreams in which I'm dying are the best... Henry Lane. His story was very moving and made me cry. He landed on D-Day on the British Gold Beach and also on Juno Beach. He was wounded while he was still in the water and lay under two of the bodies of his friends, his comrades. Nearly two days he was in the shallow water. He said he could remember closing his eyes and hearing the hissing bullets hitting the water all around him. It was an honor to shake his hand. Happy birthday, happy birthday. And I feel the way that every child should sit and listen. Sit and when we went to visit Vimy Ridge, I think we were all intensely struck by emotion. We were amazed by the sheer size of the craters caused by shelling. Despite the peaceful atmosphere Mimi takes on these days, the dead silence causes an eerie impression. We walked through an awe-inspiring tunnel that lies below the battlefield. It was terrifying to imagine the men who had to spend so much time down there in nearly absolute darkness. The trenches were very deep and were apparently much deeper at the actual time of war. Back then, Bags of sand line the walls and are now replaced with cement replicas. I find it hard to tell you. I find it hard to take. When we visited the Vimy Memorial, we were emotionally taken by the symbolism. At the front stands Lady Canada, a large statue shown mourning her many lost sons. The engraved names of all those who lost their lives in this battle cover the monument. Visiting Vimy Ridge affected us all greatly and is definitely an experience none of us will ever forget. Thank you.